And for more on this mission and what we can learn from it, let's go right to James Head. He's a professor at Brown University in the Department of Earth, Environmental and Planetary Sciences. Professor, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. First, I want to get your reaction to what we've seen over the course of the day, your thoughts on the launch and then the docking, and then soon what we expect to see these Taikonauts crossing over into the space station. It's a really exciting time. I mean, no one can watch a launch of a rocket like that to, um, you know, without getting excited. I mean, it's an amazing, amazing event. It's very dangerous. Um, I remember talking to uh, a four-year-old friend of mine, and I said, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's dangerous. And he says, I know, there's fire under the rocket. <laughs> and, you know, it really is dangerous. But nonetheless, uh, it's, it's also a, an imperative. We, we, need, we need to explore space, go on to the moon and on to Mars. And uh, China has shown uh, today, again, uh, that they're very capable of doing that. So I'm really excited about this next step uh, into Earth orbit and then, of course, on uh, out to the planets and beyond. Thank you. Well, with this mission, the Taikonauts are spending double the amount of time uh, at the space station than the previous crew. So six months now instead of three months. Uh, and that will soon become the norm. The subsequent missions will also be six months. Uh, what do you hope to learn, or what do you think we'll see from that? Well, it's interesting. Uh, you know, there's a, a series of things that, that we explore in space. One of them is the effects of microgravity. Another is, uh, can you grow plants, or how do animals survive in these types of things? And not the least of the animals is the taikonauts. You know, being able to study how humans respond um, in space health-wise, but also mentally health. I mean, these are, these are not, uh, you're not just going to the corner store uh, or uh, going on a vacation here. This is really, really strenuous. I've spent um, five field seasons in Antarctica, and basically we fly, get fly, flown by helicopters out into the field, and we get dropped for two or three months. We have to carry everything with us, and it's very strenuous. You've got a lot of research to do, uh, and the psychology is really, really interesting. You have to build a team that can work together and all of these things are really major types of uh, research and activities that you need to develop to accomplish the scientific exploration of extreme environments like space. Right, you have to keep your brain sharp while your body is taking uh, the stress of, of uh, what is around you. There's a lot on the agenda, as we mentioned, in the next six months. You mentioned uh, some experiments. There will also be physics experiments. Uh, one of the Taikonauts will be teaching a class from outer space, I believe. What are you looking forward to, and what do you think uh, will stand out to you over the next six months? Well, I think uh, just getting space to be normal, basically. Uh, you, you know, I mean, right now we have the International Space Station. One of my students um, has flown in the International Space Station, and uh, Jessica Meir, she did uh, the first all-woman spacewalk uh, with her with her uh, colleague, Christina Cook. and. You know, basically, we want it to be normal. We want it to be the next step. And uh, so it's very exciting, and I think it's very inspirational. And, and having uh, the Taikonauts teach students from orbit is really great. Jessica did that for us at Brown. She beamed down a, a, a discussion uh, from the International Space Station, and I have to tell you that the students were really, really thrilled. The whole university was there watching. And uh, at the end, she just had a little brown bear, which is the symbol of brown, and she twirled it around, and then she disappeared straight up. It was absolutely great. Wow. What a learning experience. That's amazing. I want to ask you about what's happening as we speak. Um, we understand that around 7 o'clock Eastern time, our time, uh, the Shenzhou 13 docked to the space station. Now they've been working uh, all through the last few hours trying to go through these hatches, these series of hatches to get into the space station. Um, I was commenting earlier how awesome it's been just to see this all unfold with all the video that is available to us. I know that you just spoke about your former student, but just the fact that we're able to see this as they are seeing it. I think it's just great. I, you know, I think people have this misnomer that China has a, you know, secret uh, space uh, mission. And, you know, that's anything but true. I, I'm working on the uh, with my Chinese colleagues on the uh, Chang'e 5 samples. We just, uh, I, I was honored to be a part of the paper that they published in Science just a few uh, a few days ago. And uh, so it's, it's really great to see every step of the way because I think people have to understand exactly what's going on. Um, these are not easy things to do. They're complex. And to share in the excitement of actually entering 
uh, the space station. You know, to know that you just don't open the door like, hey, I'm home. No, no, no. <laughs> you, you have to be careful every step of the way. And it's great to have uh, the Chinese public and, and the world uh, participate in that. So, I, uh, you know, more power to, uh, to everyone to make this an open and beautiful example of, uh, of how exploration takes place. Right, I mean, everyone's uh, learning from each other. You mentioned the Chang'e 5. There's also the Mars mission as well. So everyone is sharing information, we, we hope. Yeah, well, we're working on the Zhurong rover, too. Um, you know, uh, I'm working on a paper uh, to publish uh, in the National Science Review um, about the global context, what we've learned from the American missions to Mars, and what ha that, how that helps us understand uh, the details of the exploration of the Zhurong rover in, um, in the Utopia Basin on, on Mars. It's very exciting, and it's very complementary to our NASA Perseverance mission. And so we're really anxious to uh, work with our Chinese colleagues to exchange information and, uh, and learn from it.